Good afternoon and welcome to Athena Games live stream unboxing of Wave 5 as well as the Corellian Conflict expansion for Star Wars Armada. I'm Jonathan, Firth Clark, and to my right is Andy Jones, who you may have recognised from some other unboxing videos. Um, today we thought uh, new releases all came out today, and so we're going to start you off with what's probably the most eagerly anticipated part of this wave, the campaign expansion itself. So, um, Andy got his a little bit earlier, and uh, we've had a quick look for it, we've had a quick look and for um, it. it looks really good. There's a few minor niggles with it. Firstly, the size of the box. Yes. I mean, it's smaller it's than tiny. I expected it would be. Um, yeah, and I thought it was going to be a larger box, so when I was first opening it, I thought, ooh, is there going to be a board in here? Is there going to be a board for the sort of to sit alongside your battle um, board? And unfortunately not. Uh, the board, it comes out as um, a paper. So, um, okay, that's a little bit disappointing in my eyes, but I suppose if you look at the size of the, uh, the, um, the space map or the galactic um, sector map here, you do think that if it did come in a board section, it would have to be a lot bigger box, and therefore the price would have increased. Yes. I think if it was a board, it would have been of at least 10 quid more. I mean, this was 29 99 over here? Uh, yeah, yeah. 27 So 27 99 not a lot at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. And you get some nice things on it. You get... Uh, uh, it isn't... It says the Corellian Sector, So you, but you get places like Duro's on here, down the bottom. Yep. Uh, you've got Salonia up here. Um, and... Honestly, it looks better than I thought it would. It does. For, it looks for, really, really good. For where you can have your battles. Yeah. But like you say, I'm very disappointed it wasn't cardboard. Yes, Especially yeah. seeing as uh, what FFT have done with their... Well, I'd prefer it to be a cheaper price. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather it be 27 quid mm -hmm. as opposed to 20, uh, 30 or uh, 40 or 50, which it could have been if you had to have the board. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to fold this up and I think I'm making a hash of it. There we go. So yeah. So that was... Surprise Andy's, number one. My biggest disappointment with this... Uh, uh, but I think we both agree with this. And we all agree with this. Um, we'll get into the good things, because there's a lot of good things in a yes. minute. I just want to get yes. these out. Is um, Throughout the campaign, as you win, lose sectors, you place counters on these circular parts that you can see here, mm -hmm. next to the planets. Mm -hmm. And these allow you to, uh, to dignify, uh, signify who's won, who's lost. However, what FFT have not uh, shown is that they actually come as stickers. Which means if you were to use them as they actually want, you stick them down once, and then that's it. So it's almost like it's a legacy game. Which, okay, there's no problem with that. I just wish they told us in the pre-release information yeah. beforehand. I mean, that that to me is, it stinks a little bit of like, oh, we might be able to get a bit more money out of these people. If they want to play more than one campaign, they're going to have to buy more than one set. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm uh, a bit disappointed with that. Cer certainly with our, within our groups. and. Uh, could I? Could you argue? Sorry, for butting in. Could you argue that that's the reason for the lower price point and the that, cheap, cheap and the, that and that you cheap could you could build. argue, and that isn't my problem with it. My problem is the fact that it wasn't explained to us beforehand. It was it was shown ah yeah. uh, this whole new expansion you're gonna get. You open it up, and then it's like oh, so if we play it the way they want us to play it, it's one shot only. But Andy had a brilliant idea to uh. Yep. Well, Use I was going to buy some tiddlywinks and um, and stick my stickers onto small yeah. plastic counters um, so I can reuse them. However, what I do have to say is, um, with the map and the stickers, um, if you're playing this and it's going to take a long time to go through this whole thing, I and mean, we were talking about um, four to six players playing at any one time, there's going to be various things happening as you sort of accrue those campaign points. Um, if you had tokens, it's easy to. Um, it's, it'll be easy to sort of like lose the tokens on which token yeah. was on what, and then you might have a few arguments saying, "Oh, well, I think that this token was on this one, and this yeah. one was on the other one." With the stickers, at least you can fold the map, put it back in the box. Yeah. You get it out; it's there. And the other thing is, um, we know several people are going to buy it. You've yes, bought it. I've bought. bought it. Our sort of immediate sort of like um, friends and sort of people that we play with will all get Our it regular as players well. Will get it, yeah. So there's going to be plenty of these maps around. And I think that, you know, it's a sort of a small sort of thing that... Um, it's a got, niggle. It is a literally there a niggle. Is, there is some benefits to having yeah. it on paper and having yeah. it as stickers as well. So, I mean, like I say, it was only a niggle. And my, my, my main problem is the fact that FFG weren't quite clear in the previous yeah. advertising okay. that it was going to be a legacy-style game. That's fine. If that's what they want That's what they want to least, that's great. Yeah. That's a little disappointment. But um, 
it can't it cannot uh, overshadow what you, else you get in here but before we get to the really cool things um, you just get some other things like you get your little uh, team rosters you get one for the uh, rebellion and one for the empire obviously we think that they're going to be PDF format on yeah. uh, Fantasy Flight's website and even if not um, so you can someone somewhere website. within the week will have turned it into a PDF online <laughs> yes. uh, and then you get uh, a bunch of these uh, conflict fleet rosters mm. so you have uh, your, your player name your fleet name what faction, your fleet commander, because you have a high ad, a grand admiral that you need to appoint for your players. Then you decide, you, you write what your assault, defense, and navigation objective is going to be. Uh, and then your battle record. So your wins, your losses for those fleets and everything. Uh, your ships on the back. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing that they've done, I think. Yeah, and you I know? think how many of these do we get in here? You get... We get six, six. so that, that's be enough one, for six players. This one will be per one player. per team. Now, I was always under the impression, although we're not fully read through the rules, that you could swap your fleet around. That you could sort of like you could say field a Mon Mothma led fleet, yes, um, with a certain sort of ships in, and then as you've sort of may have won or lost that battle, you could then sort of like change it completely I if think, you wished. Uh, Possibly, um, we'll maybe you can. Something more. we'll have to look into a bit more. The mm. thing I was under the imp uh, the only thing about this is. As you lose ships, so uh, as you lose a name ship, say mm. Demolisher for the uh, for the Gladiator class Star Destroyer, once that's been destroyed, that's it. You cannot get that name ship but back. But then you must be able to replace that. Yeah, into you must be able to replace it into your fleet. So yeah. that's something we have to look a bit more into. Like I say, me and Andy have only had a half an hour to look at this beforehand. Yeah. Uh, everything we know is pretty much what's been that, spoiled online. That does suggest the fact that you've got six of those pieces of paper in this box. This yeah. is for six players yes. that you are supposed to keep roughly the same fleet yes. fielded each time. Which, if that is... But then again, um, that's just maybe FFG's uh, preferred way of playing. Yeah. Everyone's going to play differently. You can have home own rules and everything. So mm. um, uh, let's not forget, this is FFG's first time at releasing a... For, for a Star Wars game, either X-Wing or Armada, a campaign expansion. Yeah. Um, so With the small exception, there, there was small campaigns in the, yes, um, there the was, Corvette expansion for X-Wing, which, um, which was good. You get uh, new sets of tokens. We will show you what's in here. Yeah, whilst Johnny does that, I do think that it's um, quite important to point out the, the, the brilliant... Um, that you actually need a um, a three by nine play area for um, provide um, to play all out offensive, which is basically a thousand points versus a thousand points. Six fleets. Nuts. Six fleets. Just absolutely. Three players nuts. per side. Three yeah. fleets per side. Yeah. I really want to play that. Yeah, that would be really awesome. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, so your tokens. You have a uh, really nice thing. You get some more astro fields, uh, another station, and your new um, dust storms, which yes, uh, will um, do some new stuff. Um, it's, and even in your normal play friendly games. This is going to add more tactical, uh, more tactical mm. um, differences, more things to do. Yeah, um, which is always good. You get your uh, diplomats and your spy Spies. tokens. Uh, you get all your your fighter dials. We're going to go for all the fighters in a minute. Uh, which and some of them we, are we, fantastic. We, we did comment that you have to replace these dials with yeah. the ones you have, so yeah. you obviously don't get any plastic sections. No, you don't. Get. But then again, because you're not getting any fighters in there, it makes sense. Mm. Um, mm. You've got your. Uh, what uh, your um, bl uh, can't remember if it's called blooded. Uh, uh, yeah, so they're, some, they're not called blood. They're no. just called um, veterans. Veterans. Tokens. That's yeah. it. Um, so, so as your fighters survive, uh, if they survive to the end of a, a, a match, next time they come in, they become what's known as veterans. So they get one of these, and it, you spend it, you get a reroll. Um, it's a nice way of showing continuity through the yep. game. Yep. And then you just get some more. You get, as you know. you get the, uh, the, the uh, interestingly to the scarred. Um, squadron tokens and scarred ship tokens against the, sort of the normal standard ones here. Yes. Here. Uh, yeah, brilliant. So, uh, all awesome. Now, on to the best bits now, of... Now, for me... This is what you buy, this basically. Is, yeah, this is what you for buy me, the campaign. For me, £28, just for these alone. The, uh, the, the green ones are campaign only. So, there's eight of them. But we've counted, you get 20... 26, 27 or 28 cards here. New objectives, new squadron cards. For me, that's a pound a card. That's worth buying this just for these because these are going to come in handy in your normal game as well as a campaign. And I think it's certainly what the game needed after it. Um, so. Well, it was released sort of about eighteen months ago yeah. in the UK, and having these extra, uh, these twelve extra um, objective Objectives. cards is really awesome. Yeah. And all the pirate cards are also really awesome yeah. as well. So, so uh, we got uh, we got new campaign objectives: asteroids, uh, which is. Uh, place obstacles as normal, replacing the station with three additional asteroid fields, so you wouldn't have your 
uh, station, yeah. and there cannot be more than two copies of each asteroid field. Uh, special rule, when one of the second player ships overrides an ast- uh, asteroid field, that obstacle has no effect. Um, to be perfectly honest, a very neutral um, objective. doesn't really give you any Just extra um, sort of victory points. No. It's sort of, sort of a standard one which doesn't really sort of affect the game. Well, it affects the game, obviously, but there's no sort of real point system one way or the other on there. Um, and joining us now, he'll be here in a second, is uh, Chris Ewells, uh, another uh, veteran uh, yep. Amada player uh, uh, from yep. Athena. One so, of the tournaments. Uh, he will be uh, going through some of these, and because Andy has to leave in an hour, going through some of the ships with me as well. So, but asteroids. Now, this is the one I really like. Yeah, Nebula outskirts. Basically, uh, you place obstacles as normal, but you place the three asteroid fields with two dust fields. Now, the special rule is <laughs> absolutely amazing. The first player increases each ship's command dial. Yeah. By one, so yeah. your star, your Imperial Star Destroyers will have four. Your uh, Interdictors will have uh, your Interdictors have three. three. Yeah. Your Gladiators will have three. Yeah. The second player decreases it by one. So <laughs> you can is... you can have Gladiators with one. You can have uh, Relentless, Relentless on the ISD, on the ISD which inc- decreases it by one as it is. You can have an ISD, one of the most heavy hitter ships in the game, with one command arm, making it which... as reactive as a Corvette. Or yeah. a raider. And, uh, it's fantastic. Personally, for me, that is the best um, campaign yeah. objective in the whole game because that is going to be absolutely insane to try and, and combat all those ships which have one command dial. I on love the, that. On the, off, on the other hand, you could be stuck with a four command dial um, MC80, a Liberty, yeah. ISD, Victories, yeah. all those good, which would also be quite ridiculous. But it does sort of lend the question is. You need those command dials that you're giving to you in the pack, so you would need to have other expansions. Exactly. To, if you just had a few expansions, which some of our newer players do, yes, yes. they will be able to feel that. So there's a little bit of a thing. Well, you know, you know, maybe maybe sort of give a couple of command dials in there if they're going to do that. But yeah, uh, that was brilliant. I think it's going to be so much fun and also incredibly irritating to come up against Demolisher. With one and, dial. And the oh thing as well God. is, while that's a uh, campaign expansion, that's something I would play just in a friendly game on a Wednesday night. Yes. I would throw this in just to say, what the hell, that looks really fun. Yeah. Then you have base defense fighter wing. Yeah. Uh, before deploying fleets, the second player may choose up to 40 fleet points of additional non-unique squadrons and add them to his fleet. So it can be up to 440 points. His squadrons can be up to 173. Yes. Uh even if this exceeds the number of fleet points he would normally spend on squadrons. Mm-hmm. Um, and he assigns squadron ID tokens of a different colour to them. Uh, the fleet point cost of the additional squadrons is added to the first player's score as normal as if they were destroyed. Would you like to come join us, Chris? Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt. No, that's <laughs> fine. Going through it, so that's fine. So There's a lot of these. But, yeah. Oh. Um, uh, it, it's basically, uh, and after the winner is determined, the second player removes the additional squadrons from the fleet. It's mm. just uh, it's a nice way of, like, as it says, base defence. You're yeah. there... You're the defenders. You have a slightly better advantage, but at the same time, it's only for that one game. Yeah, it, yeah. it's all right. It'll be fun to play. I don't see it getting much play. No. Um, well, that's obviously sort of like very, very specific mm. to certain aspects yeah. of the Korean conflict. Because uh, the Korean conflict, because the the three there is three base defense yes. um, ones. If you attack a base, a imperial base, or rebel base yes. on the uh, game. Um, this is Chris yours, by the way. Yes. No. One one of the you, tournaments. You, also some of you may remember Chris. He's been in I've, quite a few of these unboxing videos. Up. He turns up. When he, when, he, when, he, when, when they let me out. Yeah. Um, of his cage. Cool. So, yeah, uh, Fight Wing. It's a bit like, um, you're, obviously, everyone's probably seen The Force Awakens. It's a bit like um, Tarkin's Revenge, which is the, the wing of uh, FOs they have for protecting stuff at the base. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so, yeah, the other two ones we've got here were uh, Show of Force and High Plane Raid, which are obviously the, uh, the two. Uh, the Show of Force is the Imperial special um, mission. mission for. Uh, for the co- uh, conflict and the high plane raid is the rebel one as well. The only um, thing very, that very Andy similar. pointed out to me, uh, there's no signifier on it. So unless you know beforehand, which I didn't, uh, you you wouldn't be able to tell which one's which. Yeah, they'd probably be in the rules, but you thought there'd be a little maybe a rebel. Yeah, one you, yeah. there'd be like a rebel logo, like the uh, like the characters do. Yeah, which they've uh, often got affiliations. Mm. Um, so so sorry, so, so we're, we... we're gonna just uh, just to bring Chris yeah. in onto the uh, the, um, the nebula outskirts yes. card. Uh, Chris is a big Demolisher fan. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's very few of Chris's fleets that doesn't have Demolisher. Yeah. How do you feel about a one a one command Demolisher? Chris? It's or one command it's relentless. So silly. It's, it's going it's to fantastic. be fantastic. Very reactive. 
So, yeah, um, obviously I've looked at spoilers for this, not to bring us out. So, I'm at, have we gone through all the cards yet? No, no, no we no, still, we, we, we still got two through. base defence. We really do need to read the hyperlane and show a force and then yeah, independence. Because the hyperlane one is where you set up at each end. Yeah. The other ends, which is quite fun. Anyway, so carry on. Yes, but Nebula Outskirts is going to be really fun. Yeah. Uh, show a force, the Imperial one. Um, so this is all about acquiring yeah. resources. Just and looks, sort of to repair looks ships, mainly. really fun. Mm. Uh... You place obstacles as normal, excluding the station. Second player places two stations in the setup area. Each station must be beyond distance one of all obstacles and distance three pro players' edges. Uh, both stations are unarmed, uh, and you place the card near the second player's uh, ship cards. Um, first player ships and squadrons cannot resolve the effects of the unarmed station. However, they gain one victory token for each unarmed station that is not destroyed. The second player does. The... Uh, First player gains one victory take token and his team gains 40 resource points for mm. each station that is destroyed. And so each station is worth 20. So he can t basically gain um, 40 victory points, 80 resources. And if he wins a game, he also gains another 40 resource points. So t basically 120 resources. Yeah. yeah. Um, so these guys... Is it not set? Um, sorry, I remember reading something in the in the spoilers for these guys. Um, is it not set? Who's the attacker and defender in terms of Imperials and Rebels? I believe it is. Yeah, the first player, yeah. The second player. I think, yes. I think basically the wins. show of force is basically. It seems to me like oh, you got some stations there, Rebels. Cool, let's destroy them. Yeah, uh, and it's, the this Imperials. is sort of these these two are obviously key to um, uh, to acquire the resources to he heal scarred ships so if you do have demolisher scarred um, if he dies in the next game I believe he's totally destroyed yeah he's, he's um, flat out dead yeah, yeah. And he's flat out dead so you need these to save those hugely and crucial ships home one um, yeah basically all the sort of like the Mon Karen, you know all those crucial ships yeah. these are the sort of the saviors these are the the holy the, the holy grail yes. you know to regen the ships yeah. um, that's the primary reason and Hyperlane Raid is a very similar it's it's just it's just the uh, uh, the special order for the rebels to get their resources back. Mm -hmm. Okay, base defense, arm station, and ion cannon. Uh, look similar to fighter wings, but you just different different abilities. Yeah, different you know? abilities for the base yeah. to deploy in the game. Okay, uh, not really much point in going through them because uh, I quite like the ion cannon. I like the fact that the you, the the, the, the the sort of this the space station can shoot ion cannons into space and cause yeah. all sorts of troubles. Yeah, and um, get the blue crit. I think that's quite fun. Yeah, I like an armed base. I was about to say uh, with the sorry Andy uh, with the the rebel one, which is the hyper, uh, the hyperspace assault. It's the first time we've seen like alternate deployments. I don't know if the other any other cards have them in, but you set up instead of saying up uh, portrait. Oh sorry, landscape. So. Yeah, each player is on the longest side of the board. Yeah, each each of the players is on the shorter side of the board. It's basically a race towards the other side, there, which is quite fun. There is in mm -hmm. one of the um, yeah one new of objectives. We'll talk about that. We'll yeah. talk about that. Andy is absolutely in I'm love excited. with that card. Excited. And then independent station. Um, place the obstacles as normal, excluding the station. Replacing two debris fields with two dust fields, which I'm looking forward to playing mm -hmm. with. I don't know about you two. Then yeah, yeah. Uh, the second player places. Uh, station set up area on distance one of all obstacles, distance five of edges. Uh, station is an armed station, and uh, you place the armed station card near the second player. Special rule the armed station does not have the ability to discard damaged cards or recover whole points for ships or squadrons that overlap it. What card is that? Uh, it's Independent, Independent Station. station. Yeah. Really moving away and from the, sort of the, the capability of the station, just to get sort of come into here. The original sort of capability of the station was to heal. They've sort of they've taken that away with a lot of these cards, yeah, yeah. Um, and given it a new role, which I think is quite exciting yes. because it makes it more than just an obstacle that you might occasionally land yeah. on. Yeah, I it's... never. I mean, it was always a case of. Oh, I might land on this. Yeah. I will never actively go for this apart from contested outposts. Yes, the um, only so time I've ever used the station, and ironically, the only time I've ever beaten him. Is with contested outposts because I'm always the second player, yeah. so I just park on it for four turns and just rack up the points. And yeah. that, you know, yeah, okay, great, but it doesn't do anything. It's, and it's one, it's one of the worst, in my opinion, it's one of the worst objective cards from the core set. I think it's. I mean, I do well, think it's one worst of in, ones. Uh, in terms of as in terms of fun, it, in terms of, in terms of like strategy. Yeah, the, yeah, you can definitely go from there. Obviously, you've got yeah. lots of high command ships. You can just sort of roll up and sit on it and be yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, yeah. uh, you're not going to win this objective. Anyway, objectives that you can use in your normal game. These are brilliant. You have got 
We'll start with Andy's favourite. Yeah, so the blockade run, which is basically um, a massive race, like wacky races, um, from the, th- the three-foot side of the board all the way along. Um, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be lovely for Corvettes to play. Um, second player will get victory tokens for each ship with, a, um, with an objective token within the first player's deployment zone. So you would literally hightail your Corvettes up there and try and whack up as many of those 20-point victory points you can. You can also whack on um, engine techs onto a Corvette. <laughs> which would make it a fundamentally speed five. Yeah, that's a little bit nuts. But I love the nuts. I love the nuts of this it's, um, this blockade. Run. It's Brilliant. such a it's such a cool thing. Where it's like, oh, your Corvettes. Here's my Star Destroyers. Just line of guns. Just it's it, it's, it's called blockade run for a reason. It smacks to me cool of um, of what Star Wars was about. Yeah, that original thing in the new film. Yeah, yeah. From, like, yeah. The oldest film. Um, now coming on to two I really enjoy: close range Intel scan. Mm. Um, just. Uh, Basically, your first player can, um, uh, no, second player can, when he's attacking a ship, he can spend a die with an accuracy icon, he gets one victory token. First player can spend two die, he gets one victory token. It's a nice way of, like, trying to even out the points. Again, you'd see things like Intel Sweep, which I've never been that good at, and I know if I'm coming against someone playing it, they're probably going to win the game on points. This is a way for people to, yeah, it's a bit more give and take, and it's it's a bit bit risk reward. It's a bit more of a neutral, um... Yes objective as well because it's not highly it's not highly favoring the um the first player no it's uh, not the yeah, second player so the first player can do it's it not, it's, it's just... not highly highly favoring the first the second player like some of them do like like, uh, like advanced gunnery or gets opening salvo uh, not so much opening salvo because I like using open salvo because it is quite neutral whereas mm. some of the other ones like oh, most yeah. wanted yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. gets really tasty because they're just like that shit that yeah. shit I do have kill to him point what I... and you want to get mine I will point out the one good thing is um, when the first player has to spend two actual icons now if you have um, quad turbo laser turrets on a ship which is being activated by home one you have got automatically two yeah um two uh accuracy points there um and you can spend uh, those to get these back so over the course you could possibly get maybe 60 points back but the actual sort of upgrades will you may be able to get more 19. you may even be able to get more it's also an interesting an interesting but yeah minimum of six yeah it's also right an interesting toss up because obviously accuracy we're using those to shut people's defense tokens down so if you're not doing that to get <laughs> victory points You'll then yeah. home one is going to be brilliant for this because yeah. it's going to give you automatic accuracies and you could just fly around yeah. and just sort of plop 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 people in from long range and yeah. just k- rack up these ten points. Marvelous. Yeah. Now let's talk about targeting beacons. This is one completely neutral. It will help both the first and second player. Uh, you place four uh, four four uh, objective tokens in the setup area, uh, and the best thing is when you attack. Uh, oh my bad! It is not Whoa, neutral. Is this yeah. one is sorry completely. Uh, Weighted in favour of the second player, what but they all are. <laughs> yeah, they all are. But this one, th- this one. If you were the first they're player, you would not choose this one. Yeah. Do all not choose this one. Objectives. That's my bad. I misread that thing. wrong. Um, yeah. Basically, when the second player is in range one to two and making an attack, and oh, he's distance. In, uh, distance, uh, distance one to two of an objective token, he can reroll two attack die. You know, it's quite nice. it is nice if you're the second player. If you're the first player, it's gonna but hurt. But it's it, but it's also going to draw for the first player. It's also going to draw the second player to those, so you could just sit on top of it and just hammer them. Yeah. It's like you, you want to be over there. Okay, cool. Mm. I'll sit here and I'll just shoot you. Yeah. Um, station assault. Uh, place obstacles as normal. Uh, second player places two stations. Each station must be placed beyond distance one. Uh, obstacles free. So same setup as normal as we've read on quite a few of the others. Uh, the special rule, first player ships and squadrons cannot resolve an unarmed set. Uh, second player gains one victory token for each unnamed station that's not destroyed. It seems very similar to uh, yeah. some of the uh, kill... stuff you get in there, but with just a generic one you can yeah. play normally. Kill stations. Yeah. Or don't right. kill stations. Here's the, uh, the navigational ones. Um, yes. I think they're the navigational ones, are they? Well, these, these, these yeah, or they're, uh, I believe they're defensive. The yellow ones. The yellow ones are here. Now, um, when we originally uh, had the, sort of the release of the information base, there was one yellow objective mission missing, and this is the yellow objective. Capture the VIP. Defensive. Yes. Uh, defensive, sorry. Um, that is no, bonkers, because it has 50... Um, 
victory points. There's only one a token, so it kind of makes it a little bit like a mobile contested outpost, yes. where everybody's flying towards this one objective token in an attempt to get it, but if the ship gets destroyed on it, then that loses the token and something else gets it. Yeah. For 50 points, that it's, is massive. It's capture the flag. It is it's capture, capture the, flag. the flag. There's some interesting... Really? Uh, I was talking to Andy. There's, there's there's an interesting sort of combo you can do with uh, the rebels if you have Riken as your commander. Because yeah. because even if the ship gets destroyed, it doesn't yeah, get removed. It still until, has to so, complete yeah. its So own, you know, so own. the first player might have to wait until that ship's activated to destroy it. Because if it hasn't, it can then move further away towards one of the, the other rebels. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun to play. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think so. It's again, it's a nice sort of neutral one because mm. nobody's getting any bonuses. Yeah. It's just you scrapping over an objective, yeah. and it's only worth fifty points at the end of the day. Is it? That, that's, that's quite a lot. I mean, the only other objective that's worth more, you know, uh, as a one-off would be Intel Sweep, which is worth seventy-five. Yes. Isn't it? but you'd then have to get yeah. several objectives, or at least three of the five. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Jamming barrier. This is uh, slightly unusual. Uh, again, you place obstacles as normal. Uh, you. Uh, you uh, replace the two debris fields with two dust fields. You mm. don't put the station down. Uh, after deploying fleet, second player puts two objective tokens, set up area, one to five of each other. Uh, now, while attacking, in line of, if line of sight is traced between, across the line between two objective tokens, the attacker must choose and remove half of the dice from the attack pool, rounded down before rolling. And it makes things awkward. It makes it more awkward to snipe from long range. Yeah. I think, yeah. You know, you have to get Your... beyond this barrier. And then you're into some sort of serious trouble, certainly, maybe, if yeah. you've got smaller rebel ships. Or it's, smaller it's also, it's it's a good sort of funneling. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a bit like, um, if you've got a thing with an indicator, obviously, obviously you've got the upgrade, the experimental upgrade that allows you to move terrain around, and that was sort of a bit of a sort of, I'm going to put this terrain here, like minefields was. It's like, yes. you're not going to go there. over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to fight over here, on my terms. <laughs> and it's, it's the same sort of thing. And uh, now, fighter ambush. Uh... As we can see here. Um, again, before deploying fleets, the second player sets aside all of his squadrons. Uh, after deploying fleets, the second player deploys all of his squadrons. Each of his squadrons can be placed as normal or at distance one of an obstacle, but they have to be beyond distance five of the first player's edge. This is quite nice. It means you can throw all your squadrons in the middle of the board. Oh, rebels. Yeah, for some Rebel- rebels. Oh, yeah, with my. a lot of bombers. Um, after a squadron forms an attack against the ship, if the defender was dealt at least one damage card, the squadron owner gains one victory token. So mm. this is a way for, for, for bomber heavy fleets. And you get 15 it's, points for each token. It's, it's, a, it's a nice one. It's a defensive... Um, Screen. Uh, what I'm trying to think of the original objectives now. Because um, you've got superior positions, but that's a... That's one way that's you That's a navigational the, yeah, one. And you shoot the rear um, of the What's the... Um, there's an offensive bombing one, which the rebels, which is really no, good precision rebels. strike. Yes. Precision strike. It's a defense. It's kind of a defensive precision strike, mm. yeah. except it only works on squadrons. Squadrons, the, yeah. With, rather than um, the yeah. other one, which works yeah. on ships and squadrons, because yes. if you just deal people damage cards or I think with fighter. So no, no. With, squadrons need to form attack against the ship. So this will only work. Yeah, yeah, no. This one yeah. works. With, this only works with squadrons, but the other. Oh, one, it works with you. Yeah, yeah. Got with it's uh, about with this, flipping, fi- flipping cards face up. With this particular card, it's going to really need you to have the rogue. Um, keyword because yes. your ships might be your fighters might not be so far from your um, ships to be activated mm. squadron yes. or, so YT2400 YT anything fire spray it's going to be a nightmare it's going to be brilliant or you've got uh, relay which, yeah, was, relay, which is a keyword we'll yeah. see when we go through the fight squadron yeah. packs yes which uh, beautiful yes. that's another good one okay uh, and the last defensive one planetary ion cannon um Placing obstacle after placing obstacles, second player places three objective tokens uh, beyond distance five. Set both players' edges. Standard. Special rule: at the end of the command phase, the second player may choose one enemy ship at distance one to three of an objective token. Remove that token from the play area to perform an attack. Uh, an attack against that ship. The attacker is treated as if it is a ship with a battery arm of four blue dice, but is not friendly to any ship or squadron. Uh, the attack is treated as being at medium range, cannot be obstructed, can target. Any of the defender's hull zones, and has the following critical effect: the, f- the defender must choose and exhaust one of his defense tokens. So, that's so a blue critic. that is fundamentally base defense iron cannon, which is a campaign specific yeah. objective. That is just a variation yeah. of that. Yeah. So they obviously thought that was so good, they'll bring that into the standard game. Yeah. 
On to the navigational ones. Now, this is the best. This is possibly my... Could be my joint favourite, stroke second favourite. Right. Navigational hazards, which allows you to move the asteroids around um, at the end of the turn. <laughs> which is makes wow. it, which it makes, fundamentally makes it more amusing and gives you that sort of reality that you are flying through an astral field where things are floating around and yeah. it could cause terrible problems. That would be hilarious. Certainly then if you move an asteroid in front of somebody, they land on it, critical hit, that is terrible thing to occur. So, brilliant, love it. I Beautiful. can see me playing with this and... Moving asteroids into my own path without realising it. That, that's the kind of thing I would do. So uh, I do not want to play that. With your very, very feet well, radius. Your big, your big yeah. lumbering... Yeah, uh, my Star Destroyers. I love my big ISDs. This is like, okay, I'll just move this in front of you because you can't do anything about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sentinet. What do we think of Sentinet? Um, Sen- Sentinet is when... Um, when a ship reveals a command at a distance one of another objective token gains a victory token that much like Intel Sweep it's just yeah. a variation of Intel Sweep I think ultimately so um, however and then you move the objective tokens around I believe uh, yeah y- yes mm. so unlike Intel Sweep where you collect and get rid of them you can move them around uh, it, get more points it's for fast ships yeah it, it, it seems to be a more uh, high paced uh, Intel Sweep in yeah. my mind Get my medium transport on that yeah. and get that acting as fundamentally Pac-Man running around the place. Yeah. So Solar Corona. Solar Corona is more unusual because it sort of has that sort of weird edge thing. I would like to sort of see some actual scenery for this because that'd be quite fun. Um, where you sort of like you lose the capability of shooting anything within the Corona so much. So um, yeah, uh, it, it make it will make uh, the uh, Rebel ships more um, survivable. Um, certainly for stuff like the um, the ones that don't have the brace. Um, too much braces um, and too many redirects so yeah. like the Nebula and B and stuff um, I quite like it I think that'll make him make it more um, like the Rebel ships more survival I'm liking that fly it in yeah, fly I'm it liking in. that the, uh, uh, a lot of these objectives seem to be changing the way you play the game completely like the way the board <laughs> move the board around it's, add more things to the board it's it's nice the again the, the whole the whole um, aspect of objectives in the game means that it's got lots of scope, which is nice, which is why I, I like this expansion so much. It's it's a totally new way to play the game, and yes. then they're just giving us like, oh, the box down, the game's cool. They've got new things as well. And it's going to be brilliant. Yeah. And now, Salvage Run, the final, final uh, objective. Uh, what do we think? I mean, it's... it's... It's just like, and also, once again, it's like with every navigational um, objective, it is a case of you moving around the board trying to acquire objective tokens. Now, to me, that is certainly one of the key aspects of the game now because it's going to be very difficult with the Imperial um, Light it, Cruiser um, expansion. It's got that reinforced... Yes, um, yeah. Uh, reinforced hull... Yeah, which looks there, really yeah. nice. Which gonna, yeah. you, t- you, you put Motti... You've got that. It's going to be nigh on impossible to destroy anything. It really, really does focus the um, the game on these objectives. I uh, recently won a game where I only destroyed two A wings, but yes. I got a, a lot of the intel um, things. A chap I spoke you won to the online, um, tournament because of that. Yeah, you? a chap yeah. who I spoke online lost one X wing. So these navigational objectives are certainly going to um, really make it important for you to get these victory tokens because I fundamentally believe victory tokens are the key to the game and it's even more so now so so uh, 20 new objectives 8 campaign specific ones some of them you can pretty much play not yeah, like, that's fine for us, yeah. 12 ones that you can play in your, your normal game mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was it worth it Yes, I mean, I would probably buy the objectives as an expansion by themselves. Yes, yeah. They release them in little sort of pack, like yeah. FFG does. Uh, I would happily buy them, but the fact is that they're value for money. They're going to really, really sort of inject a new sort of life into the game. It's going to be a lot harder for people to sort of play against these objectives. Um, and yeah, it's really going to blow the game wide open just from an objective perspective. Brilliant, fantastic. So now we're moving on to my favourite part of this. Oh, we haven't done these yet. We haven't oh, done these I, yet. I thought we'd done them. <laughs> no. The yours is getting no. so excited. I thought we'd done them. I was like, so excited. I'm just going to sit now, here and have a, have a flick through these. 16 new squadron cards. 16. So. All unique. So we have our two mm. TIE fighters. We have Black Squadron. Oh, I thought, I thought we were doing unique first. It doesn't matter. They're both unique. Black Squadron, counter one with escort. Tie escort, Fighter, man. nine points. One point more than your standard uh, uh, Tie Fighter. Uh, it's got one counter, and then you throw Dengar in there, you can get up to two counter. Mm. And with escort, why wouldn't you take and it? And usually there's like I'd... a swarm. 
No, it doesn't. Yeah. That is true. I think I... they had to get rid of that to put those in. Mm. The thing about these guys is a lot of the a lot of the new squadrons we're getting for the well, like new cards for the old squadrons. Is they're all unique, and it's like, yeah, I I don't I, I don't see why I would take an escort because the thing when the article coverage came out is I thought that you just get no new black squadron card. You gonna you get to choose between normal tie fighter, yeah. and black squadron, which is, which makes sense because it's either shooty or escort and a bit of counter, which is nice because you're. Yes, yeah, no, you're okay. right. it's yeah. ideal but having just one of them and you haven't got any defence tokens mm. but you're escort so you're going to get shot at I'm not I'm not I'm not yeah I, I understand I, I originally thought the uh, the um, rogue squadron it, was the same yeah, okay, I get that it's a point but okay I, I get I get where you come from however I just love I love having the choice now I love having the choice yeah, of the more choice, stuff to do the choice is nice but you only get you only get yeah. choice once okay. that's the thing that's got me uh, moving on to the name TIE Fighter pilot now Valen Rudor uh, he has Swarm which is real uh, if you play Armada you know it's uh, while attacking a squad and engage with another squad you re- re- may reroll one die very nice it's basically a uh, uh, Armada version of X-Wing Tower Runner uh, and then his named ability while an enemy squad is engaged with another squad it cannot attack you so very nice. He's uh, got a lot of survivability in He's there. He's also got uh, an enemy squadron element of three black dice. Yes. Oh yes, that's very weird. yes. That's that is weird. Well, they, that they that could have... be the worst roll in the world. That could be, but it could also be the greatest roll in the world as well. Yeah. Uh, would only find I, many. I don't damage. know. Um, I, this is. I imagine he's got now got black dice because he can't be shot by other squadrons. Yeah. Um, because then you just then you just accuracy other people into next year. You'd accuracy every, all of the mm. other. Uh, named pilots so that's yeah. probably why he's got black dice rather yeah. than unlike most named pilots he comes with a, a brace and a scatter defensive yeah. token mm-hmm. so he's kind of he's very similar to Mauler and Howlrunner moving on to the TIE Advanced Squadrons now <laughs> you have Tempest Squadron uh, TIE Advanced with Bomber yeah, bo- it's got Bomber es- uh, it's got that's Escort it. as well yeah. Yeah. Uh, one black three blues five hulls speed yeah. four We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take this and we'll put this into the Bomber pile over here because I'm going to talk about the Bomber pile in a moment yes um yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's again, um, again. It's the same. It's the same criticism I have of the X of the of the ties. It's like, why can't I have more of these? Why is there only one? Because they're too good. That's the thing. They're too good to have more. Bomber, of them. bomber and escort. Same thing. Uh, X wing has. Yeah. I mean, they're sort of like. Yes, I suppose that is the case. Um, uh, yeah. There's. there's I'm not. I'm reasons. not. I'm not entirely sure. How much is an X wing? Thirteen. You're getting different stats and speed values and. Arm you are values because don't forget, X wings can only move speed three. Mm. They've only they've got five hull. They've yes, got five hull. You've but, got but you've got one less. Yeah, um, but, and also these armor. guys are getting a black die as opposed to the uh, post X wing. So so uh, they can uh, te- they could d- deal two damage, more chance of dealing two damage than a red die. Mm. Yeah. Um, Zertix Trom. He's kind of a like really? a budget what's missile. He, what's he doing? Uh, while, while attacking, you may choose another friendly squadron at distance one. And if you do, that squadron suffers one damage, and you may reroll <laughs> any number of attack dice. He, yeah, okay. I like him. <laughs> it's he, a ridiculous. He, he's sort one. of like a budget mythal, but against your own guy. So yeah. he's. Mm. I, I wouldn't say he's anything anything like mythal because mythal is you roll up, all of the enemy squadron takes one damage when you engage them. This guy is like he's got. Three... Yeah, that's why I said against your own guy. Yeah, so but he's, he's, he's not, in, in he's the not wrong doing, way. He's not doing automatic no. damage to enemies. He's just doing. Yeah. That guy takes one damage. I'll reroll my dice. He's also got an armament, a squadron armament of three red dice. So that's why you want your reroll. Yeah. Because otherwise, again, if you're using blue, you're accuracying people and. And and he has that score. But you've got you've got chance of double hits, which is I think cool. I think what it does it does sort of bring those. Um, I mean, uh, these two new tie advanced squadrons are brilliant. I mean, most people will only field one, maybe two tie advanced yeah. squadrons because of the escort capability. Because they're the only imperial fighter that has escort. Yeah, they would usually most field people one only or two. have two. Now squadrons. with Tempest squadron and Z- with Tempest squadron and the Rhymer ball, that's that's valid. That's useful. And also with Zertic Strom, the fact that he can do those re rolls as well, which is really useful if you're. If you're like, um, if you're talking, if you're trying to sort of field ships which don't have many anti um, squadrons, so I think these will bring the tie advanced sort of more into the game yeah. than what they have been yet. Yeah. Now we're coming to uh, the uh, card that introduces my favourite mechanic for fighters, the tied interceptor squadron, saber squadron. It has snipe. 
four. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Snipe so, is um, amazing. If you don't know, this will this is a range uh, range two shot that um, will allow you to snipe with four dice, four blue dice, and they can't then uh, counter you back, or they can't is it, attack. Is it back, range two or distance two? Distance uh, two. Distance two. Distance two. Yeah. Distance two yeah. And while attacking a squadron, engage with another squadron. It, it has swarm. Yeah, that's swarm. That's swarm. You know, uh, four blue die. One anti ship blue die, speed five, hull three. Yeah, they're a li- like like most ties. Uh, they're there to swarm you. They're okay. there to. I, I can I can see why this one would be a little bit too good if we had lots multiple of them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. I could see why this would be like cool. So here's my ties, and here's all, all of my all of my saber squadrons. Yeah, and these guys die. are gonna sit at the back as the ties take the brunt of the damage. Yeah. I'll sit at the back because the swarm will allow, allow a re-roll on there. Um, However, how, what... how runner that as well? Yeah. If you had how yeah, runner and boy. flight controllers, you'll be pumping out six dice. I understand the attack, nobody, so nobody can that's touch why the snipe is kept at four. Yeah, yeah. nobody the, can touch you. Um, but what Chris has just said with the snipe, in the fighter packs there are generic squadrons that do come with snipe, but they're not as high. Yeah, <laughs> they're but not as high it's for a reason. Points. Mm. I can't remember how much mm. a basic interceptor is. Uh, I think it's eleven. 11. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a point for that ability. Yeah. Yeah. Which is going to be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Now, good. Sienna Ree. Um, this is interesting because she's one of the very few fighters who uh, you will treat as obstructed. Mm-hmm. Uh, while you are defending, uh, and I'm assu- it doesn't say from a squadron, so this is from a ship as well, the attack is treated as obstructed. So she's got That's a nice. lot of survivability. She's got counter two and swarm. And as you can see, she's got uh, a brace and a scatter. Yeah. Um, for 17 points, <laughs> I'd say it's a bit expensive. Yeah, but she's but if you very got, survivable. Yeah. But... Um, it depends what you want. How about a sixteen? Yeah. I wouldn't throw her. I wouldn't throw her into a bomber list. I would throw her into a fighter screen. Yeah, she yeah, needs to be there for a screen. You know, yeah. um, that along with saber squadron oh, for for twenty nine points. Why would you not take that? Mm, That's still quite I expensive. I mean, we're talking. I don't about know. The fact I don't know if I'd have, have both of them. Mm. You could nearly have four four time fights. Maybe. You could, nearly. but but snipe. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> snipe. Okay. Snipe's good. Um, right. Gamma Squadron, your TIE Bomber. Uh, bomber and Grit. Yeah, Bomber yeah. with Grit. Uh, not Heavy. Not Heavy, no. Not heavy. Yeah, um, not heavy, yeah. But only has one anti-squadron dice. Yeah. One black anti-squadron. Yes. Totally and utterly not for, um, for <laughs> no. you know, ship, uh, fighter to fighter combat. Yeah. But <laughs> 10 points. 10 points. Yeah. And then Captain Jonas. Uh, bomber, really? Grit, he so has got good. heavy. So good. But but in, in exchange for that, he has 16 points, but in exchange for that, you get your two brace uh, tokens as normal. But when a friendly ship is attacking a ship at distance one of you, it may change one die to a face with an accuracy token. Oh. So he... It's a way to get around um, Scatter, which is one of the most annoying... Um, oh no, sorry, it's not sort of a friendly ship, ship when yeah. a ship. So, yes. so no, fundamentally what it's doing is doing a home one esque style, yeah. um, you know, chuck that extra accuracy in there. It's gonna be horrendous. He's only gonna be following around the sort of yeah. various big ships. Because you're not gonna fly point, him off yeah. in the distance with but everybody for 16 else. Points, yeah, he he's a good way to if you've got someone who's getting very lucky and being very annoying with their tokens. Say, I like that's that's cool. That's mm. that's some cool interaction between the capital ships and the squadrons. And I think you could probably just fight field him yeah. as the only fighter, I, I, and that would I, actually just, be viable. You could just be like, uh, "Here's my here's my tie screen," and Jonas is going to stay over here mm-hmm. and just give everyone accuracies. Yep. So those That's are your Imperials. Imperials. Now moving on to the Rebel X ones, we have uh, Rogue Squadron, yep, the brilliant. most famous uh, X wing squadron in all the Star Wars lore. <laughs> um, it's bomber. It foregoes escort. But for the point more, it has rogue, which means rogue. you can move and attack during the uh, squadron phase. Yeah, really useful for that objective where they're hiding on the asteroids. You know, yeah. it could fly out, yeah. Yeah. out of nowhere. Okay. Um, very good. Um, so yeah. we're gonna. I'm just so gonna he's, keep uh, he's, 14, he's one more than normal. But, yeah, boxes. and he's probably not going to be sort of like used so much. Yeah. Again, like, it's like, a, like with a squadron command because yeah. he's rogue. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's not one of those ones so where it's like, why isn't it? Why is it unique? Why can't you just field? So I'm running those. But mm. it's a good way for me. Like, if you were going to re- field, like, say, for five squad- five X-wing squadrons, you'd have four X-wing squadrons you can activate with your three squadron tokens and enhance hangar bay, and then you can just move him about. And he's mm-hmm. he's one. I can see why they haven't given him snipe because that would be a bit OP. <laughs> a snipe <laughs> on this would be OP. That snipe that's, and that's just like even now. I was like at 14 points. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a bit good to be unique. Yeah, but you you could round it up. 
but they're, um, they're not they're gonna do that sadly Biggs. and then we go to Biggs for 19 points um they, oh, kept, they've kept it kind of thematic uh that tashio that tashio yes yes and for anyone no spoilers for rogue one but there's so many tashes <laughs> Yeah. There's so many Tashes. Um, Who knew the Rebellion likes Tashes? I think that Biggs is obviously going to keep the survivability of yeah. people like Luke, Dutch, yeah. um, He can, he uh, can shift damage can, yeah, so, by one. So it, any ship that has any squadron that has escort, if it's being attacked so can, at yeah. range one of Biggs, uh, he can, at distance one of Biggs, rather, he yeah. can then reduce, uh, move, reduce the damage by one, but he has to move that to another squadron with escort. Including himself... Janors. <laughs> Janors, guys. Janors. Janors, um, Janors and basically <laughs> shed loads of X-Wings um, basically for that because you'll just, need that escort capability just, to just, push just, that just damage pain. on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nothing a but gold pain. squadron. Gold, I was very surprised with gold squadron. I haven't uh, seen anything about gold squadron. Uh, neither have I. 12 points, so one point more than your standard... Uh, two no, points. two point more than your standard Y-Wing. Mm. However, you get two blue die for your bomber instead you of uh, one blue. Yeah. Um, you don't have That's heavy... It. You don't have, you don't no, have, you don't heavy. have heavy you now. Don't have heavy. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I like, like it. it. Obviously, going to benefit from um, from Tom and Far's uh, rerolls, bomber command yeah. center rerolls, yeah. so you can get those uh, get those things through. Uh, coming in at seventeen points, one point above Dutch Vander is the new uh, Y wing pilot, Nor Wexley, um, which makes sense. She was a Y wing pilot at the Battle of Endor. Um, uh, friendly squadrons with bomber at distance one of her gain uh, the following ability. Uh, crit the defending hull zone loses one shield so you could lose you could technically deal if you got a bomber with two die which and they is roll the two, uh, squadron they roll a hit and a crit you could deal three damage yeah fundamentally you wouldn't fundamentally be able to uh, do any critical effects with the dice because then you have to spend the dice on yeah. the um, critical effect yeah. on the card but you wouldn't you be, be able pumping out three yeah. damage with gold yeah. squadron very nice yeah. I like that you, 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 you'll lose a shield so if they've only got one shield left they'll lose the shield and then two damage will go straight on yeah and I I think that that is I'll, sort of like quite nice because that's going to make it um, harder for like those light cruisers with that ridiculous so stuff. that's that's really good so the way like, to use her is sort of like a rebel version of Howard you want to keep her in the middle of mm. your bomber groups that with again X's yeah just yeah. a load just a load yeah. maybe some maybe some Y's but X's yeah. just yeah. like oh because my crits do the X do wings, damage the X, the X wings pump out that red dice um, for ship combat so rolling that crit means that that will um, lose a shield and the crit will come in a normal hit so you'd be two or three damage per shot. Wow. Now we come to my favourite card. <laughs> A-Wing, the Green Squadron. Uh, it's an A-Wing <laughs> with Bomber. Um, there was no image online for it so if you would mind, thank you very much. It's an, it's an A-Wing yeah, yeah, I don't think we've seen that one yet. Bomber. Yeah, with Bomber. There it is. Uh, bomber bomber counter one. one. Uh, well, that's just insane, isn't it? The back dot, that back is dot. pretty... That's pretty pretty tasty. Speed five. This this thing's gonna be insane, and that's probably why there's only one of them. Yeah, I was about to say this is it's a bit good. For twelve yeah. points, you're looking at one point more than your normal A wing. Well, yeah, like most of these things are. Like yeah. he's a nice he's not alternative again to X's and what. And the thing is though, um, it's gonna be so fast that it's gonna fly well out of range of your. Um, yeah, uh, sort of like activation, and it doesn't have rogue, which is very fortunate. But it's going to actually fly out there and start bombing stuff. So it's not going to be able to benefit from any rerolls mm. normally. So you're going to um, have to be quite fortunate to roll those two crits. And it's on only got count of one, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Now we come to the named pilot, Shara Bay. Uh, basically, her she's got counter three. Mm-hmm. She's seventeen points. She's got counter three, but uh, when you perform your counter attack. Each crit icon has one damage, so you're getting a 66% mm. chance of damage instead of a 33% chance. Uh, That's pretty good. It's nice. I like I it. I like that. Yanos as well. Chuck that in with yeah, Yanos, yeah, so Yanos. they can pump out some yeah. sort of extra, some extra stuff. To um, it. Yeah. Now th- this is what's interesting. Dagger Squadron with a B-wing squadron. Uh, it's Ooh. a bomber, but it has swarm. Again. <laughs> it has swarm. Yeah. It has yeah. swarm. So, um, but for, it's still speed two. Yeah, for 15 points. It's also got a. Two blue and a black dice for anti squadron, squadron and yeah. one blue and a black for anti ship. It's I, I, something I'm going to have to play with to see if it's worth it. I think this yeah. is the sort of ship that you would fly very close to your capital ships to basically use the capabilities of re rolls and also therefore it can mm. pump a bit of da- extra damage out yeah, as well. Yeah, because the, the big problem with the B Wing I've always seen, I'm, I know I'm not a rev re- player, but they're just too slow they are yeah. slow yeah. and they're expensive there, there's some things which we'll be going through in a minute the Phoenix home there's some things in there I think that 
will help you with that. Yeah, but you have but to build your fleet around that. There's, mm. There is there's lots of lost things in Rebels to increase your speed. Like there's a title where you can double move but not shoot. Um, there's one that increases. I, I I can remember the double move and shoot one, but I can't, I'm sure there's another one somewhere uh, where some people with bomber increase their speed by one. But I think that's corrupt for. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of that for the um, yeah. victory. It, it but... really does need a corrupted no. star card. Yes. Now, Ten Num, he's a B-Wing pilot. He is the rebel version of Maul the Miffle. While attacking a squadron, you may spend one blue die of a crit icon, and if you do, each other enemy squadron at distance one of the defenders suffers one damage. So he does splash damage. 19 points. He gets uh, got bomber. He gets two braces. But once again, he's slow. He's yeah, so he's, slow. Yeah. I don't know. I think he might, he might be worth Investing in because worth of that, looking at he's at got least, yeah. he's worth. I think he's worth looking at because of that splash. Because you've got um, you've got a black dice, you've got two blue, so you've got a good chance of a crit turning up, and you could do that more than once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so there's nothing stopping you. Go, oh, roll three crits. Cool. I think Everyone I think take three. I think with these new B wings, they're going to be kept with sort of close to the ship. The Z ninety five, which also has swarm, is very very useful yeah. because the, you would be inclined to sort of fly them off. You kept them close to the ship, you get a bomber yeah. wing coming in. These B wings are going to sort them out. Basically, they're yeah. going to totally sort uh, them out. Yeah. I will say, Jules, it does say that when attacking, you may spend one blue die. Oh, one with blue a, die. Yeah, one. Yeah. So you, you can't spend you, all you four. Can't, you can't no. do once, which is no. which is a shame. But it's still it's still quite nice um, to hit a bunch of people with some damage. But here's the thing: eight new uh, A wing, eight new rebel cards, seven have bomber. Yep. Uh, so once we are going down this horrendous route of bombing the bejesus uh, out of people, and also uh, eight the new imperial wings. cards, only four have bomber. That's still good. That's not the. That's, 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 that's not the. That's not the. It's not the worst thing in the world because no. again, it's it's all unique. Yeah. You're only getting one of those squadrons, which well, is, which again, I'm I'm really torn with the whole idea of these non-named unique squadrons. They oh, seem yeah. to be pushing the bomb out in the meta at the moment. And we've also just got the other th- uh, the other three cards. We've got two unarmed stations and an arm station, which looks brilliant because that thing is going to be pumping out blue dice. Um, against the, oh, it's against like uh, capital two red, well. two blue against uh, uh, anti squadron. Yeah, one red against two red, caps. two blue anti squadron. So this could actually this this is possibly one of the most important cards in the game because you might think that your squadrons are safe, but no. they're not safe from the space station <laughs> it's, it's, anymore. Like, this is evil space station. This is Sith space station number one. Darth Vader's own personal station going around causing horrendous chaos. Okay, guys, so that's the Corellian conflict. Apart yeah. from our minor niggles we had with, with, with some of the... I am 99% pleased with it. I am. I don't think it was ever going to please everyone 100% of the way. I am so happy with what we've gotten, though. It looks really nice. Like See, I say, my only niggles are what if, we talked if, about if, at the beginning. If, if you had just the the the, fight, the cards, yeah. how much would you pay for cards? 20 quid? I'd pay 20 quid. Did you pay 20 quid yeah, for cards? Yeah, I'd pay 20 yeah. quid. So when you consider I mean, for another for, 8 quid, you're getting all those all cards. That, a campaign. Uh, yeah, so it's value for money. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, my, like I say, my only issue with you guys talking about it, you know, they kept obviously try to keep the costs down so yep. they can yep. uh, give you a, a pack you can buy multiple times if you want to play more campaigns. They, and to be fair, uh, there is a secondary market for cards. You can very easily sell on the extra cards or even just keep them as spares. Mm. So, I mean, I don't see why you can, you know, <laughs> for a copy of this. I mean, yeah, no, don't get me wrong. Like I say, uh, like if you're I said, really against putting sticks no, on it, for a copy. Like I said, it isn't the fact that they've done it, it's the fact that they've kept quiet about it and no one knew about well, it until it was released. That's is, my only niggle with it. The, the thing is that um, a sort of new style of board game that's been coming out quite recently is the Legacy game. Now, um, Legacy. Yeah, I, I've I've played C4. Pandemic Legacy. I'm in the middle of C. Oh, I'm in the middle of. Like, we just started C4, and I really like that kind of thing. I know it could be played once. There's a lot of money to play to play it once, but it's very cool. That nice. Yes. Right. 